the Cleveland Cavaliers are finally doing something that I think they should have been doing for quite a long time, and that's going out and actively searching for young talent. Uh, you know, some young talent on other teams that might not have potentially panned out that they could potentially get for, you know, cheap. A player that has been very rumored now that the Cleveland Cavaliers are interested in is Kevin Knox from the New York Knicks, and this is all being reported by Sam Amico. I'm absolutely so excited that the Cavs are doing this, not because they're interested in Kevin Knox, but because they're actually scouting young talent across the league. Now, look, I'm not a fan of OKC and some of the things that they've done, you know, in terms of trading for 40 million picks it did not very make me very happy. But I do like and applaud the way that Sam Presti, their general manager, has gone out and actually gotten young talent such as Moses Brown, you know, players that uh, could provide some value to a team that have a lot of, you know, progress to go. But who knows, could actually be something or someone in this league. And that's what I thought was a really good thing by OKC. But here you got the Cleveland Cavaliers who uh, have Kevin Love playing, you know, up to 30 minutes per game. And he's like 32, 33 or something like that. Torian Prince, who's 27 years old, playing heaps of minutes. Damian Dotson, who's 27, playing heaps of minutes as well. They brought in Anderson Verge, who's 38, has been playing minutes. Matthew Dallavadova, who's 30. I couldn't quite understand why there was like five older players on this team playing a significant amount of minutes. I just was thinking, you know, surely we go out and scout some young talent. And then, of course, towards the end of the season, it was rumored the Cavaliers are interested in Jarrett Culver. I think that the uh, Minnesota Timberwolves will very much be interested in Torrain Prince because they desperately need a power forward. I think he'd be great for them. If we can get Jarrett Culver out of Torrain Prince, which is rumored could happen because he hasn't done anything for them at all. And apparently next year that they're going to be trying to get heaps of plays and free agency. So they won't even have minutes for him to play. I would hope that the Cubs could try and get him for like Torrain Prince and maybe a second or something like that. Again, there's rumors he won't even be in the rotation next year. So if they want to give him up, that'd be cool. And then, of course, a player like Kevin Knox, who actually had a pretty underrated start to the season. Like, I remember when I was watching him against the Cavs, he was cooking us up. Now, I know that he's had very big issues in his career with, you know, a lack of having a tank, you know, in terms of he can't very run very far. His stamina is pretty bad. But he seemed to improve that a little bit this year. And he was actually 39% from three, hit 35, 89 shots. And I remember he was just daggering threes against the Cavs. He averaged four points and 1.5 rebounds in 11 minutes. Look, it's not exactly great, but hey, if I was the Cavs, I would much rather give a dude like Kevin Knox minutes than Kevin Love. At least you get to see if this dude might be a right. You know, again, he does look to seem to be like that nice catch and shoot player, I think. And if you were the Knicks, I think you would make something happen like this because they're going to try and free up, uh, you know, as much cap as they can. They're going to free up all of it. They're going to try and go into this free agency where they will probably only have, like, who knows, Julius Randle and RJ Barrett's contract. They'll go get their stars that they want. Then they'll, you know, re-sign players like Reggie Bullock, Alec Burks, uh, of course, potentially... Um, uh, who even knows, Derek Rose could be there as well. Unfortunately for the Knicks, though, it, it does look like that Kevin Knox will be going into next season with a $4.5 million contract that will go up to, I believe, $5.8 million if they do accept his team option. Now, if they don't accept his team option, then, which is what I think they will do because they're going to want to free up as much cap as possible, then they don't have to pay him at all. But if they do, they will have to pay him $5.8 million. Now, here's where things get tricky. I don't think the Knicks will accept it because they're not going to want to pay him $5.8 million. He will become a free agent. Therefore, the Cavs can sign him for as much as they want. If I was the Cavs, I don't think he's going to be getting offers more than $2 million a year, obviously. I would give him a similar deal to what they gave Dean Wade, which was like the minimum to $2 million. Uh, over three years, but none of the years were guaranteed and they were all on team options. So, for Kevin Knox to have a second chance in this league, 
I think that'd be a good deal for him to take as well as he gets guaranteed, you know, a couple more years um, on, you know, cheap money. So teams probably wouldn't be inclined to waive him. But again, none of the money is guaranteed. Knowing So he knows that he has to work for every single second that he gets on the court just to make this money. And I think why not do it at a team like the Cavs who are young and will probably be looking to play some young players. Now here's where this gets issue, uh, a lot of issues come in. Jetty Osman, who's on this team, who was not getting played towards the end of the season, he'll get traded. I definitely know a team, you know, a couple of teams out there will trade for him. Of course, Torrain Prince, so many teams that need power forwards would love to trade for him, like the Minnesota Timberwolves. I think we should let Kevin Love reach a buyout, which means he would probably go play for a team like the Portland Trailblazers. Then I think the Cavs should, of course, go out and get young talent, such as Kevin Knox and Jarrett Culver. But I think one of the issues is here is you let, of course, Torrain Prince go, you let Kevin Love go, and you let Jetty Osman go. Those are practically three forwards that you've just let go. You'd think that the Cavs would need to bring in some more power forward depth. Of course, I think Kevin Knox would have to play a lot more of that power forward you know, type of position. I'm really unsure if he's able to do that. When I used to watch him on the Knicks, I know he, I think, only used to play small forward predominantly, so I'm not too sure how he would, of course, go of playing that power forward. But, hey, it's not like he's exactly too small. I wouldn't think to the player. He does sit, uh, stand at six foot seven, 201 centimeters. So it might be a little bit too small, but I think he can definitely... You know, he'll probably be able to play, especially if they get, like, Jarrett Culver. And then you've got so many good young defenders like, you know, Culver, uh, Isaac Okoro. Th that should be enough to potentially have Kevin Knox have that little bit of a disadvantage of power forward. Of course, again, Culver, I think, would be really, really cool to maybe see on this Cavaliers team. You know, again, I'd say it's pretty hard to see... I don't, Culver obviously wouldn't play power forward. He's only 198 centimeters, six foot five. I think he is still a little bit too small to, of course, be playing that power forward position. So he'd probably just play a lot of small forward, probably a type of wing role. But I can't see him back on the Minnesota Timberwolves next season. They'll probably look to trade him for a nice power forward like Torrain Prince, who should be able to come in and, of course, you know, help their team. Again, another player that the Cleveland Cavaliers are interested in that I think I should talk about to kind of finish off this video is it's also being reported that the Cavaliers are interested in signing young veteran players such as Derek Jones Jr. as well. And this is all being reported by Sam Amico as well. So he's been kind of on fire. Derek Jones Jr. is a really weird case because last year I thought he would have been one of the most perfect players for the Cavaliers to sign. I thought he could have come in and done that Isaac Okoro role of course, before Isaac Okoro even did the role. Again, he's went ended up going to the Portland Trailblazers, which, in my opinion, that was such a weird decision by Derek Jones. I'm sure there would have been a lot of young team, uh, you know, young teams with young rosters offering him deals, and he went there. It was really weird. He is only 24 years old. I believe he has a team option worth about $9 million, which I'm sure if, if the Trailblazers are, go are going to blow it all up and rebuild. They'll probably re-sign him because he's still young. But if they don't blow it up and they keep, you know, Damon Lillard and CJ McCollum, etc. I think they might let Derrick Jones walk just because that's, of course, $9 million they can probably use elsewhere to maybe sign a more veteran type of player. Of course, their defense was really bad in the playoffs. I don't know why, considering they've got Covington... Jones and Nurkic, their defense should have been all right, but Nurkic was not a good defender towards the end of the season. Norman Powell did really good. Lillard and McCollum's defense was super inconsistent. Robert Covington's de you know, declined to uh, a completely new stage now where his defense has declined heaps too. Uh, Derrick Jones Jr. as well, I didn't really get to see much of him in the playoffs, so I don't really know anything about his defense, but... He did only average 7 points per game in 23 minutes per game, 31% from 3. I think if the Cavs have blown it, you know, all up and have traded a bunch of players, Derrick Jones Jr. at only 6 for 5, although he does have the ability to guard power forward, we saw him do it at the Miami Heat. I've even seen him play small ball center at the Miami Heat, where it actually looked alright, it was kind of weird. But hey, Derrick Jones Jr., I don't think the Cavs should probably sign him this offseason, because I think... He's too much like Isaac Okoro and Jarrett Culver, of course. You'd probably be getting in, so you'd probably have too many of those wings 
uh, on your team. I don't think, I don't know, I, I definitely don't know. If you don't get Culver in, maybe go out and get Jones, but I think Culver has a higher ceiling than what Derek Jones does, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, I'd probably, if I was them, look at more of that, you know, forward, genuine type of forward guy, like a power forward or someone like that. I think for the Cavaliers, it makes the most amount of sense. And I think bringing Isaiah Hartenstein back in free agency would be very beneficial. And I think bringing in a defensive point guard that can play make off the bench would be really good. Of course, like a Matthew Dalvadova, but much better Matthew Dalvadova, maybe a younger version. Not too sure how many of them are necessarily out there. I'm sure if they looked hard enough, they'd probably find some guy. But of course, it's going to be really interesting to see how this all goes. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Should the Cleveland Cavaliers sign Kevin Knox and sign Derek Jones Jr.? Should they bring in Jarrett Culver? Again, I'd definitely really like to know all of your thoughts and opinions on this down below. Don't forget to subscribe to my gaming channel and my IRL slash long channels. And don't forget to check out my podcast as well if you haven't already, which I will link all of them in the description down below. But as I was saying, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and comment. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Through the wastelands, through the